Good afternoon and welcome to Lunchtime Shows where we add value to people's lives happening every Wednesday and Thursday on ebizradio.com. You can catch Lunchtime Series on all major podcast channels and to help us grow the channel and add more value to people's lives, please follow, like and share today's conversation because on today's coaching segment, we have uh, the human lie detector, which I'm <laughs> really excited to talk to. It's master life coach, published author and behavioral coach, Lizette Falkbane. Lizette, how are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. And thank you for having me, Kevin. Thank you for being here. Uh, you know, I've seen you. I see. I follow your social media, and I, I know that you have this these conversations. And um, uh, every time I see it, I'm like, oh, I, I need to uh, remember to 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 uh, to uh, message Lizette. But I know that something's coming up, which we'll share right at the end of the program, and you can tell everybody about it. And uh, guys, I would encourage you to check it out. But before we get there, we want to chat about this whole human lie detector. So. To, to, to kick it off, why hum, human lie detection? Why, why this topic? Why do we talk about it? Why do we need to? Well, let me start with the beginning when why I went into it. You know, I've started mm. originally, and you, as you know, I'm a master life coach, and I do the full spectrum from childhood coaching right down to business and CEO coaching. I've done the spectrum. And what I've realized very early in my career is that everybody lies. Everybody, uh, every one of us lies in an average in a 10 minute conversation. <laughs> and everybody goes, but I'm not a liar. We're not, but unconsciously we are going to lie. You're going but to ask it... me how I am. And I'm going to say, I'm fine. <laughs> but means I'm back at the road <laughs> with a lot of things I'm worried about. Yeah. So down very early in my career, I realized that everybody lies. And for me to get you from point A to point B, I want to know why, why are you lying to me? And that is where my interest started. And then I obviously pursued the career and I went on to do the full spectrum with the PI Institute to start studying human lie detection. So yes, I'm a certified truth and credibility consultant and also a qualified micro expressionist so that we can see why we lie. I can't connect everyone I see on a polygraph. But if I know what to look for, what the unconscious mind really reveals, I can see everybody lie. <laughs> so, but, but, but like, what about white lies? Do, are, are they still, aren't they just okay to have a, a white lie? You know, those, those little things that you, you, you omit from saying because you, you might be <laughs> saving someone a bit of drama or, or heartache? <laughs> well, here's the thing. You need to ask yourself, Kevin, where do we define and where we stop a white lie? Because for maybe for me, with my core values, my morality, a small white lie could be, I'm fine. But for yeah. the next guy, if morality is different, he would lie about something serious and see that as a white lie. So mm. we have to determine what is a lie. And a lie is anything where you withhold information, we're not omitting the facts, and whether or not telling the truth or I'm, I'm swaying it a little bit, manipulating the truth to favor me. And that is where we have to look at it. And also, don't you find, uh, and I know it's not part of my list of questions, but just to unpack a little bit, because it's so interesting to me that, uh, I mean, sometimes we, we do this and we don't realize that we're lying. It almost becomes like this is the normal nature. This is how I identify as a person, as a leader, as a manager, mm -hmm. that this is what I normally say and because it serves me best. But even in that situation, it is lying, right? And I think people, people... Even, even if it is serving you, it's still lying. Like you have to make that connection. Correct. And that is where we as human lie detectors come in because we, we, we depend on it. That with the moment your unconscious mind is going to say, we're not in sync with what you are saying, that we are going to start picking up the tales and also the way you are speaking to actually know whether you are lying or not. And it's not purely to go and say, but Kevin, you are lying. But it's for me to better com better my communication skills so that I can use that information to get to what I really have to get from that conversation to better my future or whatever. So even when I think that it's just a white lie, my subconscious is I'm not in sync. Mm. And that affects our mind. And you know it. You know, that becomes an unconscious bias where we say, I don't really think it's bad, but... 
the subconscious mind is going to tell me the tells. And also, talk to us about, I mean, you're saying that uh, that misalignment because congruency, right? What you yeah. say and what you do really need to exactly you know align with each other because that that can communicate incorrectly as well. If I'm not in congruency with what I'm saying and what I'm behaving and even what I'm feeling and self-languaging, um, something, and it's, it's, it's your non-verbals, right? That's what you're speaking Actually, about that, that, that people pick up on. Yeah. And you know, that is why a lot of people don't realize that within that split second, when you meet someone, both our subconscious minds are evaluating us each other to mm. see whether I'm going to like you or not. And if you don't know, and you know, that's why it's so important. Yes, I understand. You are going to say, I'm fine. You're not going to blur everything out to your CEO or your manager or even to your colleagues if mm. you're not having a great day. And that is just a question of my privacy, my core values. You know, some people just say, oh, I'm having a bad day and they're going to blur everything out. But some people are going to say, I need to reserve my core values of my privacy and I'm very attend to who I'm going to say what to. And that's also the difference, which we need to understand about lying. So, I mean, we, why are we having this conversation and why I want to share this? Because you actually, you, you, you've put together a prop, like a full workshop for this, right? For people to actually understand, come to the workshop and learn more about how this, you can use this as a tool at, at, in your toolbox of, you know, your kit to kind mm -hmm. of, to have better conversation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think an intention is also good. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm sure it's not your intention to, to like catch catch your partner out when he's is white lying to you i'm like that's exactly. not the intention right but it is isn't. it's a good tool set right to to be able to know am i hearing the full truth here or what is the where's is there a root cause to the cover-up or the lie or what that's about well absolutely you know and without a doubt you don't you're not going to go on this workshop to pick on a lie and to go and say, oh, I'm so clever. I know exactly when every, I, I'm, you know, I'm offended by everybody who's lying to me. Yeah. But it's an absolute tool to improve your communication skills. Now, the more I can improve the way I speak, the way I pick up on people and I improve my listening skills, my communication and my um, interaction with people are going to improve so much that the moment we look at all these pictures of communication what am i hearing what am i listening to and what you are saying i can react much favorable and i can yeah. also extract more information out of you if i know the right questions because one of my um, modules we're going to handle in this two-day workshop is going to be cognitive interviewing now we mm. are so focused on going on to the factual wording of things instead yes. of the emotional wording of things so the moment we change that and we start looking at what are you emotionally telling me and what are you experiencing that is also picking up on lies and that will that's the things we are going to teach you in those two days that's such an interesting factual wording and emotional wording right and mm -hmm. i think people don't even they they don't consider it you know when we're having a conversation you 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 tend to kind of just go oh, well these are the facts and you know try and be very logic with but as humans you know doing what we do we know that our brain uses so much more our head brain our heart brain our gut brain uh, we also use your intuition uh, you know, yes. we also use questioning in a way that wants to elicit information. And it's so beautiful to consider, you know, how are you, what's the language? Uh, and I think that's a fantastic thing to be able to learn on this workshop. So can anybody be taught to be a human lie detector? Without a doubt. Let me explain to you. There's Tell me. Less than 5% in the world can naturally pick up on people's lies. Everybody else can be taught. And if you start understanding, and there's eight different main categories which you need to look at when you do go into lie detection. And I'm yeah. not saying that within two days you'll be a human lie detector, but you would have improved your skills to such an extent where right now any person have a 50-50% chance to be right about a lie. But the moment we go into 
um, lie detection and you go, for instance, after this workshop, you'll be in a better position not to be fooled easily by other people. So one of the questions that I, that sort of come up for me and, you know, just being devil's advocate here for, for the audience today, kind of saying, but how do we take out the sting? Because, you know, if you're saying to me, <laughs> you know, this is a lie detector and like well, I'm going to walk around looking for, for people lying, um, how do we frame that so that it, it it empowers us to learn a skill of understanding how to navigate the information better? Yeah. Well, the first thing which you need to understand, a doctor doesn't walk out in the mall and go, oh, you're ill, you ill, I can fix you, I can fix you. That's mm. the first thing you need to understand. You're not 24-7 on alert. Yes, with the skill, you do pick up a lot more than so you do work in a way 24-7, but it's an improved skill. So mm. I'm not going to sit and say, I'm having a conversation with Kevin today. I'm going to see how many times he lies to me. I don't. <laughs> yes, but yeah. I'm very aware of the way we speak and the way we communicate that I can create a proper rapport with you. I can create confidence with you. And then we feel comfortable the way we speak with each other. That's where I do focus on. So when you start saying, but... I don't want to just go learn how people lie. You're not. You're going to learn a valuable skill to improve your communication, to start seeing and appreciating what people are telling you. And with that, you're going to learn to appreciate that that other person feels appreciated when you speak to them. So am I right in assuming that having the skill means that you're a, you're, you become an a far better and perhaps an expert communicator. You become far better at at um, uh, conflict management. Yes. You become far better at uh, having those difficult conversations when you know one you, it needs Correct. to be had, right? For sure. Let me explain to you. You know, when you sit in front of your buyer, for instance, let's use the example of the buyer and the salesperson. You know, the most buyers going to say just to get you out of the office. They can say, yes, I'm going to give you the order. Just leave me with the quote and I'm quite happy and everything. But the moment if you can read that right skill that he, mm -hmm. what he did, he just took his cell phone and put it in between you. That's a sign <laughs> of a barrier. Unconsciously, I love that. he just told you yes. that we don't really have a conversation. But now his wording is say, oh, yes, just leave your stuff with me. I will definitely give you the information. I'm saying no with my mind, but my words are saying I'm giving it to you. Now I'm picking up on those skills. The phone, the, the face is going doing this, but I'm saying yes. So yeah. now I'm picking up on it. And now I can say, are you sure there's not something maybe that you don't feel comfortable with? Or do you want more information? Yeah. And now you can start drilling into that. And that person can start seeing, but you are seeing something and maybe you're building trust. And now I can give you more information. When I speak to my manager or you are speaking to your um, subordinate, you can start picking up when they're holding back. You know, where were you yesterday? Um, I was yesterday at the client. You just moved back. What are you hiding? You haven't been there. Yes, yes, yes. And now we can say, so after that, what should you do? Now I can draw into that and say, how's things at home? And now I can change my conversation to pull out that information and get closer to that person. Ah, and I love that you mentioned that because, again, then it, you know, you're using the skill, the tactic of getting closer to someone yes. and uncovering information that I might think I need to lie about because yes. I don't want to be in trouble. Right. Um, another one that I'm thinking of, you know, I've noticed, and I don't know, I'm, so I'm asking you, the, the, the professional, is when you're sitting opposite, you know, when you're going to a manager's office and they, mm. they go from facing you to, to, to turning their chair yeah. and they sort of cross their legs. Mm. I've always felt that, you know, from a nonverbal communication perspective, you're, 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 you're done with this conversation or... Um, please leave my office. And I'm like, that's just the vibe I'm getting. Mm -hmm. is, is that kind of, is that the kind of thing that we, we're looking at? Well, you have to understand part of human lie detection is a part is body language. Mm. But then again, if I'm very comfortable with you and I'm going to sit back and I'm a bit more relaxed and I say, hi, Kevin, and everything, that could be a relaxing gesture. Mm. But at the same time, you have to realize 
your feet are your most honest part of your body. Oh, yes. So depending where the feet is going, that will also tell you whether it's a good conversation or, or, or not. And those are the gestures you need to look at. <laughs> you know that you mentioned this. I, I've, I've actually had, I've actually used this in conversation where, where you're having a conversation at an, a networking event or something, and generally facing each other and kind of go, okay, cool. I'm kind of done with this conversation by pointing my one foot kind of away and kind of, <laughs> and not saying anything. I just kind of point my foot away and. Then they'll actually eventually go, well, it was great to meet you. It was uh, nice to see you and uh, let's catch up. And then you kind of, it's it's a great exit strategy. Um, but I have noticed that feet feet are a good indicator of where you're going. And <laughs> Well, even if you're in a circle, you know, when you stand in a circle at a network event, you yeah. know, have a look and see where these person, people's uh, toes are pointing to. And you'll find that's the person that have the most respect or the best rapport at that point in time in that conversation. So, oh, wow. you know, and those are the things I teach you in those workshops. Now, it's nothing to do about lies, but it's about better communication. So if I want a better rapport with you and I see your feet is not facing me, I can start talking and speaking to you in a manner where I can pull out more information about you that we can create a rapport. So, I mean, we, we've got some extra time. So I, I want to just, uh, can you touch on um, uh, what is so fascinating? Because I also know from an NLP perspective, you know, for me, um, I first needed to know um, I was going through depression and, 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 and I was like uh, going to every doctor and it, it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And I came across NLP and really, you know, questioned it to death. Um, but then started realizing that we have more control over our minds and our conversations okay. and our bodies and our decision-making processes than we think, right? Correct. And, and don't you just want to unpack that as, as part of, you know, because I know you have this background and so mm -hmm. that people can get a bit of science also behind this because it's not a case of just uh, learning, learning, you know, um, some tactics, but there's, there's some science based in this information. Absolutely. You need to understand that human lie detection is based on science. It is a science. So mm. that's the first thing you need to understand. Dr. Paul Ackman done a full study from the early 1940s right up to now. He's still the expert in this information of how we, our brain processes. And you need to understand with NLP, and you know that as well, Kevin, is that we create traumas and triggers by when all these senses fires together. And the moment that fires together, it creates a lot of emotions and it plays tricks on our mind. Now, we need to see also that our facial expressions, we have seven universal facial expressions right across the globe, which is all the same. So, for yeah. instance, if I show disgust, now I'm going to pull up my nose. I don't like this. Everybody yeah. does that. But the moment what happens is with our mind processing, and our subconscious mind, we're going to go, oh, I don't like this gift you've just given me. And my conscious mind can say, play nice. You need to show appreciation and respect. And you're going to override <laughs> it. And it can become a smile. Yes. But that disgust happened in 1 25th of a second. Mm. Now, we teach you how to practice to read those expressions so that the emotions and the expressions start sinking. Because we know the more we focus on our senses, the better we can put something in place which can we which our mind won't play games with us. Fantastic. I love that. So, uh, like on a personal note, don't your friends kind of say to you, like, Lizette, don't, don't you dare like, <laughs> lie detector me now? Do you ever have those moments? <laughs> I think I do. Um, they don't show it very well. <laughs> Because sometimes I do pick up that they are saying something which I do not agree, but I choose not to react. And that's one of the modules I do in my workshop is mm. when do I react and when I don't I? Because, you know, the biggest mistake we all make when we got the skills is I'm going to tell everybody on their lies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but here's the thing. You need to understand when I'm just relaxed with my family, I need to understand at that point I'm, I'm just relaxing. I need to give up my right to be right yeah. in selective conversations because what's, what's the, you know, it's 
what's my worth to it? To call mm. your art out on a lie in a general conversation because you said you went to the flying school and I know for a fact you've just attended an online course in a general conversation. It's not worth the fight. So yeah. we have to be very careful the way we do it. And so, yes, my friends know and my family know I'm just me. I'm not going to call you out because it's not worth my fight. And it's not worth, unless you're going to lie to me about money and something serious about family, etc. cetera, where you're going to, and it's a detrimental to somebody else. Then mm. my core value is going to kick in. When mm. I want to empower people, I want to care about people. I, I hate people that is not considerate. So mm. when you're going to use those type of language, I'm going to call you out. I think we share that same value. I, I must tell <laughs> <Yes>. you, I, <laughs> the quickest way to get me riled up is in consideration. Uh, and 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 that's at any level. Um, I, I really, it just, it makes me so mad. So don't you want to give us a loose overview so that anyone listening out there understands what the workshop's sort of going to cover? Um, I mean, just, just loosely so they can, they, they know why you're having this and what, what it's going to entail. And then when we're going to have this event, uh, and then um, how, how do we get hold of you so we can sign up? Oh, awesome. Thank you very much, Kevin. Yes. So it's on the 11th and the 12th of November at the Centurion Golf Estate. That's where we're going to hold it. Um, tickets are flying fast. So yes, get your tickets. But it's a two-day event. It's lunch is included, teas and everything are included, and your little notebook, etc. But what we're going to cover, and the course name is I Can See You Lie. Now, Again, don't look at just, I'm going to find out how people lie. We are going to cover the reasons why we lie. We're going to do, show you examples of how, why people lie. We're going to cover micro expressions to see what people are really telling me. There's eight categories. I'm going to cover at least five of them in that modules to show you with a quick overview of how they work. We're going to do cognitive interviewing, emotional interviewing versus factual interviewing. And then also... We're going to do a full session, the last session of the day, well, on the last day would be about applying. So you're going to have an opportunity to apply it with others in the group. And you're going to see it in <laughs> real life how it works. Yeah. So after the two days, you're going to be quite confident that you can walk out and have a much improved skill of communicating, asking the right questions and obtaining the right information to find out whether you're pursuing a lie or are you just going through a wrong, you've just picked up a wrong emotion. Fantastic. I love that. So uh, you said it's in November and those dates are? The 11th and the 12th of November. You can go and have a look on the specific website. It's lizettefalkfane.com um, forward slash how to spot, uh, um, I can see you lie. So yes. just repeat it. It's lizettefalkfane.com forward slash I can see you lie, but you can go on my page as well, which is lizettefalkman.com. And when you hover over events, it will come down. I can see you lie and you can book it for you. There are a ticket for that. Fantastic. Lizette Falkman, human lie detector. Thank you so much for, for just spending some time with us. I, I love that we, you know, that we have someone like, like this skill. I mean, because I, I, I do believe it is a skill and it's, it's really useful because I think, you know, leadership out there today, businesses out there today mm. need to need to step up their game, right? They need to step up, you know, how do I connect with people better? How do I show up as a leader better in my environment? Um, and how do I know when, you know, you know, when my 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 employees are not really saying what they need to be saying, or maybe they're withholding something because they're scared of something and and all of the all of these these techniques that 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 you mentioned, I think, really play wonderfully into you know leaders taking themselves to that next level. So, guys, um, do you want to add to that? Well, that's exactly that. You know, especially with the hybrid environment. Yeah. Um, we cannot communicate. We don't have that private moments with our employers and employees to actually talk and you know have, just have a relaxed conversation to see the normal baseline. So when we have these skills, we can go online and we can start picking up on those skills just via online and pick up on things that doesn't deviate so much and work in alignment with the truth. 
Absolutely. I love that. Guys, it's Master Life Coach, published author, behavioral coach, and lie detector, Lizette Falkvain. You can check it out. All the links that she's mentioned and everything's going to be in the uh, description boxes below. Lizette, thank you for uh, spending some time with us and uh, good luck with the program. And uh, I might see you there. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to yeah, check I'm it out. I'm on that, Kevin. <laughs> I'll see you there. <laughs> Have a fantastic day and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Cheers for now. Oh,